cuff, 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 cuff. Hello and welcome back to the Modern Music Cities Conference. Hope you've enjoyed all of our interviews we've been having today. And now I'm with the wonderful Jennifer John, who I've known for quite a few years in Liverpool. So Jennifer, you're here today at the music conference. Uh, tell people at home actually a bit about who you are first and, and your connection with music. So I'm a singer-songwriter, I'm a businesswoman, so I train lots of people to sing. I work in television and for the commercial music sector as a vocal coach. I do a lot of mentoring and I compose, I get commissioned to compose music for voices. Yes, uh, we know that. And today at the news conference you're, you're here Represent or talking about specifically in the, in the seminar. Can you tell people at home what, what you're the chair? So I, I'm i here in, with two hats, but they're connected. So I currently sit on the Liverpool City Region Music Board. Okay. And part of that board, one of the decisions we made was that we needed to create different subgroups that dealt with specific issues. So I chair the Black Music Action Group, and that group exists <laughs> to develop strategy for black music across the region. In Liverpool? Yeah. Aha! Uh -huh. And today, I've got in notes here, uh, the Black Music Action Group. That's is that, right. is that it? So, your seminar today, what, what was your discussion? What, what, what? So, um, when the awful murder of George, George Floyd happened, oh, yes. um, as a board, we decided that actually not enough was being done to, uh, you know, eliminate or redress the racism that we could all see and that the racism a lot of us had witnessed or experienced being involved in music. And so we wrote a music manifesto that came up with a set of strategies to address those issues. And a couple of these strategies were that we would create a subgroup of black artists and industry professionals to talk about what needed to be done and that a survey would be um, created and carried out that talked to black practitioners and industry professionals about what their experiences have been. So my role today um, here at this conference was to get people up to speed with what the conference and the survey, what the survey had achieved and also to say that I've started the whole process of a mapping exercise to find out what's here and what's needed. That's wonderful. Now I've asked a lot of people today this question about music and what, what it stands for and where, where we see this in, in the city uh, as, as Liverpool being the, as we renown, the city of music. What do you, what do you as Jennifer John see as music and, and, and where, where you think it should be you know, going in the next 10 years or so? We know the importance of the how I was saying in life for me it's been used for many reasons music and it could be for a romantic evening, it could be to, to soothe your children at night as a, as a lullaby. What, what, what do you think the essence of music is for you and where it's, it's role is in life? In, in, in I think like music's like a bit of a birthright. I don't, everywhere that I've been around the world music exists and um, our natural instincts when, if we have children, is to sing to our children. Any life celebrations, whether it be um, weddings, mm. funerals, music exists. Even our shopping experiences, when you walk into shops, there's music. When you, if you're into football and you go to a football match, there's music. If you have a faith and you go to church, there's music. Music exists everywhere. So I feel like it's a human right. It's something that we naturally gravitate towards. And it's something that we, becomes the soundtrack of everyone's life in some way. Isn't that wonderful? How we all look at music in different ways, because as I was saying before, now just to, I mentioned this as well to uh, Yao, Isu and people about this new project we're doing, I think you know, you've been part of this, this gospel event that we're, we're planning in September, and I've been looking at like, African music and gospel music in its role in society, and I think Yao was mentioning that we have to push it as a genre rather than it being accepted. What's your take on, on like black music, like gospel music and African music within society in England especially, and do you think there's space for it to be uh, you know, uh, incorporated within, like as a genre in, in universities and in schools, or do you think there's still a lot of work to do with that gospel music and African music? I think music? gospel music's tradition lies in faith, 
Uh -huh. So, of course, it's a huge, it's a huge thing for people who have a belief. And, and then obviously the influence of gospel music, the uplifting nature of it, means that lots of other musical genres have started to be influenced by it. Mm -hmm. But I always think it's really important not to forget that it, at its heart, it's about a faith. Um, in terms of African music, I mean, there are so many different countries in Africa, so the generalization of that is huge. But I think what we do really well in Liverpool is that we have Africa OEA, which still manages to be free which is a two-day amazing event yes. that comes to the city where we see all different kinds of, of African cultures and different kinds of African artists represented. Yes. I mean, it's huge, isn't it? Yes, so, because the Black and Caribbean Festival, I'd say in Europe probably. It's, so, I think yeah, Africa yeah. Really is definitely for African music, definitely. Okay, and uh, for anyone watching on the socials, Jennifer, if they want to engage with you for works and projects, as you mentioned, how do they get into So them? what I do is I, I'm a vocal coach and I train people. I do a lot of artistic development, get people f to from where they are now to where they want to be. So they can, and I manage a group called Sense of Sound. Of course, the marvelous Sense of Sound. So Sense of Sound <laughs> is a, a, a collective of amazing singers of all different kinds of styles. For me, it's really important that that group of singers is multicultural because for me, it's about the fact that we can coexist really well, even if we don't share the same religions, even if mm. we're not the same colours and we're not the same ages, but we have a shared passion for voices Voices. and singing. Yeah. So that's always been my ethos. I'm always interested in the singers that are out there. So if anyone wants to contact me, they can just email me. And the email address is sing at jenniferjohnmusic.com The amazing Jennifer John and thank you very much for being part thank of this you uh for me. It's been great. <laughs> I'm gonna shake that beautiful hand of you yours. Can. Always good to see you Jennifer good John and you. stay tuned for some more interviews here at the uh, Modern Music Cities Conference here at the Spine Building in Liverpool, the heart of music.